Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, we are going to talk about the silent treatment. Is this something that's bad, that's evil, that somebody's doing to manipulate you or hurt you, or is this something that's appropriate in different relationship dynamics? So we're going to explore this here today. This is actually based on a question I had from a few of our different members in the webinar recently at PDS. And um, I thought it was a really, really fantastic topic to cover. So um, if you're new to my channel, I create daily breakthrough videos for you to learn powerful tools to help you upgrade your subconscious mind, especially as it relates to your life and your relationships. So let's talk about this. The silent treatment. What is the silent treatment? Well, the silent treatment is essentially a form of stonewalling. It's when somebody literally goes silent, pushes the other partner away, shuts down emotionally, shuts down physically, shuts down mentally and really creates a lot of distancing and space. Now, the silent treatment, if you are somebody who leans more anxious, it can be really painful because it can trigger fears of abandonment. And even if you're fearful when leaning anxious, if you have fears of abandonment, being alone, being betrayed, all those different things can sort of come up because there can feel like there's this big disconnect taking place, almost as if an abandonment is, is likely to happen or sort of, you know, inevitable and around the corner. So when somebody's experiencing this, on the other side, the person who's doing the stonewalling. The most important thing I want to point out is that the silent treatment itself is neither good nor bad. It's the meaning that the person receiving the silent treatment gives to it. And it is the reasoning behind the person creating the silence, the person who's withdrawing themselves, with the, the reasoning behind why they're doing it that becomes healthy or unhealthy, good or bad, right? So some of the different things that we'll see is, is some people, when they go through this idea of the silent treatment, people will tell me all the time that they become silent and they withdraw because um, they're, they don't trust themselves to not say something really mean and harsh. And so they're trying desperately to keep themselves quiet so that they don't say things that they regret later. And I've heard this many times, which in that case, that person's trying to resolve their emotions internally. So they're not trying to do it maliciously. In fact, they're actually, you know, from a conscious perspective, trying to avoid doing anything that could cause some sort of malicious action or feel like it's maliciously received. So there's that version of it. There's also another big reason behind why people will withdraw and stonewall. And it can be that they don't know how to soothe through other people. And so when somebody doesn't know how to soothe through somebody else, and obviously these are the more avoidant leaning attachment styles, fearful, avoidant, dismissive, avoidant, when they don't know how to soothe through somebody else, they'll really withdraw into themselves and they won't come out of their shell until they feel like they are actually sort of re-equilibrated until they feel like they are, okay, I'm back to normal a little bit. I've let off some steam. I'm feeling more like myself and I'll come back when I feel like I have the capacity to do that. Another big reason I'll see for why people create the silent treatment is because they feel really hurt and they aren't trusting the other person. They don't feel safe emotionally to open up to their partner or loved one because they feel maybe either misunderstood, um, untrusting. They feel like they're unseen, they're unheard. Their feelings or opinions aren't being accounted for or recognized. And usually there's a, a huge component here of learned helplessness in the person who's doing the stonewalling. They usually don't have the emotional literacy to express or they don't feel like they're safe to express maybe because of how it's often received by their partner or loved one. Um, they don't feel like they have the capacity to express and it be received by the other person. So they don't feel like they can say, hey, I made this mistake because X, Y, Z, explain themselves and have that information properly understood, you know, recognized, seen, heard, etc. So we'll see that dynamic as to why somebody can be in the silent treatment role. And those are the most common ones. Then we can have more malicious or unhealthy versions of this. And this can be if we have a partner, for example, um, who is trying to pull back because they know it will cause the reaction. They know that it will be a method of control. They know that it will make you feel triggered and you'll come towards them. And in that case, it can be a control or manipulation tactic. And usually the big difference you'll see here is that this person can sue through somebody else. This person doesn't necessarily feel unsafe. They do know how to communicate their feelings. They do know how to share about their needs. So when they're withdrawing, they're, they're not withdrawing because they're hurt and they don't know how to deal with their own pain and they're afraid to share their pain with you. It's actually coming from a place of, you know, 
intentionally doing this to elicit a reaction. And, and to a certain degree, we could argue that like the person doing that, they may not have a healthier strategy available to them, or they would maybe try to use it, we would hope. <laughs> um, but um, what you'll see is, you know, the, the people who are trying to avoid having an argument, trying to avoid saying the wrong thing, trying to avoid being unsafe with their feelings versus the person who's actually trying to control or manipulate, you will see that they do have other control or manipulation directed or oriented tactics and techniques. So um, I'm going to make a second video that follows up because I literally could go on about this topic forever. And you might have heard my phone ringing. We have um, um, some company who arrived. So anyways, um, I am going to make a second uh, video just about how to effectively deal with the silent treatment when it's happening, um, because this is a very important topic in and of itself. Some strategies we can use to break through this, to sort of get out of this situation or dynamic so that you can feel free and empowered. And by the way, if you want to do a much deeper dive into this as well, um, I have an entire course all about conflict communication that goes very in depth, gives you effective steps for moving beyond conflict, being, being able to communicate and work through things. And also, um, we have a second course that's all about communication scripts. And it gives you a whole bunch of different scripts that you can model after based on potential problems you might be challenged with that will help you to effectively break through some of the painful dy dynamics you may be experiencing when it comes to the silent treatment. So, um, with, and, and that scripting course has so many different things. It has ones for the silent treatment, it has ones for um, different attachment styles, different needs you want to communicate, different fears you have, different boundaries you need to set, and so many other different dynamics. So that's a really supportive resource. We have a seven-day free trial to that. You can check it out down below. There's a link in the description box for you to get started for free. Um, you can check it out, and it also gives you access to all of our 45 other courses as well. So anyways, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.